I wanted to share this video in hopes that it helps some of you out there that might run into this problem. Now, just been doing a lot of uh, getting out of the garage into the air from time to time and recently purchased this Beta FPV 95X V2. You'll notice that it's a pusher style quad, so your rotors are on the bottom that pushes your aircraft into the air. Previously, I had the Beta 75. Super fun to fly indoors. You get FPV and a tiny form factor. Uh, this guy can fly both indoors and out. But the problem that I ran into is earlier this year, I upgraded my Tyrannus QX7. Now, this is the older with this ACC ST protocol, not the Access. All the new Free Sky stuff is Access. But I updated the firmware, and unfortunately, I learned that the radio firmware is not backwards compatible with a lot of your receivers. So while it will work with the receivers, you do have to update all of the receiver firmware that you want to use. With this newer version of the ACC ST firmware, I believe it was released in March. I updated it probably a couple months after that. And I ran into all sorts of problems when trying to bind this with all of my previous models. Nothing worked. So I had to go through the update process of all the different receivers. When I received this 95X V2 in the mail, I was super excited, ready to bind, get outside, get in the air, and lo and behold, it didn't work. This newer firmware is not compatible with this XM Plus receiver firmware. So I'll have to do an update. And so what I've done is taken all of this apart, I've gained access to the cable where we'll do the firmware update. This was originally plugged in to the flight control board. This is the F4 that it ships with. Unfortunately, there's not a simple way to do this. Originally, I thought, well, maybe I'll solder my own connectors in here so that I can use my cable to do the firmware update. You can see the signal power and ground here, but I really didn't want to risk uh, messing with that. So, And I have the firmware update cable from my RXSR receiver. You actually can't tell very easily, but this connector from the receiver on the XM Plus is different than the one on the RXSR. There are two different types of mini or micro JST connectors. I've clipped these leads from an old resistor I had laying around. Those actually are able to fit into that connector, hopefully make connection with these pins and the other end I'll run into the firmware update cable from the RXSR and we'll see if we can do the update this way. I have signal going to signal, power and ground, each going to their corresponding lead. Obviously we don't want those wires to short circuit, so cut them relatively short. And the other end with the servo connector is what we'll use to plug into our Tyrannus to do the firmware update. I won't go into extensive detail of actually getting the firmware on your SD card. I've covered that before, but what you can essentially do is get the firmware from the FreeSky site. I have this little SD card adapter. I'll plug it into my Mac, put the firmware into the firmware folder onto the micro SD, and then we'll load it onto the XM Plus. I placed the firmware on the SD card. Now, I will make note that we want the FCC version since I'm here in the US. I'll go ahead and power up. I'll do a long press of this menu button. We'll go to the next page, go to firmware. You can see all the different receiver firmware that I've previously updated. We'll go with the 2.1.0 FCC for the XM Plus. Then I'll make sure to connect this servo lead into the bottom here. We have our resistor leads connecting both of these. I'll go ahead and select this XM Plus, long press, and then we want to flash using the S port. You'll notice that we have some LED status, so that's good. Looks like we're able to write the firmware to the receiver. Looks like the flash was successful. Now this firmware was updated around March of 2020, right about the same time that the internal module firmware was released. So I, I'm assuming we're, we're good on the version. 
select OK. I'll go ahead and unplug my makeshift leads. See, one of those already fell out. And before we bind, we need to be able to get power back to this XM Plus receiver. So looking under here, I don't know if you guys can see it. We need to get this receiver plug down underneath the 4-in-1 ESC plugged into the flight controller, the little port that that plugs into. And just as a side note, you guys may be wondering what this cable is dangling around. It's uh, for a GoPro, one of the naked GoPro setups that allows you to get a lightweight camera on here to record your flights. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to get this plugged in and uh, we'll do the bind. So 30 minutes later, spared you guys the details of having to watch that. But uh, I had to open up the bottom of this, expose the F4 and... Finally got this receiver plugged in. Unfortunately, I was not able to do that from the top. I'm going to get this all back together and we'll do this bind. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our settings. I'll go to the internal RF setup. We'll do XJT D16. And I have a nicely packaged Beta FPV 4S 450 milliamp hour battery. So this guy will have a good amount of punch for its size. I'll go ahead and select bind. We won't do any telemetry and make sure that I can reach that bind button here on the XM Plus. I feel like I need three hands here. And lo and behold, see we have that green LED blinking here on our receiver, so that's good news. Before I mount this last motor, let me just show you guys this frame, how it worked with version one. So version one was your traditional style thrust system, and this one we flip over, and then we're going to have the pusher style. Now, there's this carbon fiber plate, as you can see, the frame with these propeller guards, and so we just put the screws through to the motor, holds everything in place, and it's pretty rigid and pretty durable. I'm excited to uh, get it in the air and see how it performs. I have everything powered up. Now, I will mention that I did have to hook this up to the beta flight configurator, mainly because I didn't know what the uh, channel mapping looks like, but I will share that just real quick. We have the TAER setup, and I had to go in and change that channel mapping in beta flight. We have SF to ARM and then we have our flight mode switch. Go ahead and arm, I had to move this a little bit away. As you know, if you're too close, sometimes you lose signal. So that's arm. This is stabilized mode. That's air mode. So that's what I'll mainly be flying in, but this is the default configuration. Test yaw, left and right, pitch back, forward, roll left and right. So it looks like all the channel mapping is good to go. Let me just demonstrate a quick test, flying it outdoors. Currently in air mode. God, this thing handles really well. Man, super excited about how this little guy performs and that's the beta 95 x v2 the next thing that i'll probably do is you can see this bottom plate which was originally a top plate with v1 the flight controller is exposed and if it's down you know grass and other debris can get in there so hopefully 3d design and print something that covers that up there will be good airflow in there and also this camera mount makes it a little bit weird maybe put some landing gear on that bottom plate. First experience has been pretty good other than the onboarding and ultimately knowing how to uh, set up the channels. But I'm super excited to get out and do FPV with this little guy and hope to share more about it in the near future. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.